This is me, Real Charlemagne, <laughs> and you 100 Proofers out there, you're ready for a great show. You know why? Because it's just us two. <laughs> well, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. But the guest today, 100 Proofers, is none other than Kev Lawrence himself. You're friendly with Kev Lawrence. And I'm a else? guest on the show and, that I'm on. And, and where <laughs> else do you be at? I'll be on my couch show. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now... The reason why it's two of us that we have a show like this is because my man has done something extra special. If you know this guy, you know, throwing the sound waves, video music box, which I'm repping, you see that, right? Yeah. See that video music box shirt, right? Uncle Ralph, what's up? Respect. So, right now, celebrating 35 years, video music box, what's happening? Now back to the show. Kev, you did something amazing Within your resources, you actually made a movie. Yeah. This guy has made a movie. And it's called Marcus. And it's patterned after a certain gentleman. Right. The movie is called Marcus of the Life and Times of Adult Film Star Mr. Marcus. Wow. Now, uh, it's an independent film. You took the resources that we had. And you know, we just made a, made a film, a feature film. Uh, now, wrote, how did that come about? Yeah. It was a, about? What's, what's the first step you took when you knew that, listen, I want to make this movie, I want to make this happen? The first step I took was telling myself, um, you're going to shoot a movie and you never shot a movie before, but you go and make it work. Right. Lots of times, uh, he was always in my head telling me, oh, Kevin, please shoot this movie, shoot a movie. Eh, I'm gonna use well, who, the capital, Mr. Marcus. Right. I was gonna use the capital to do something else. Right. Start a uh, business of mine. But uh, I took a chance with it, and I'm happy with the chance I took because as you should I can be. say I shot a film. Actually, did <laughs> you know? And just speaking with a lot of people, shout out to all the people that participated in the film to make this possible. I used to hear a lot from a lot of people that were in the film industry. Right. They were talking about they were going to fly out to California, to Hollywood, because that is the mecca. The film capital of the world. Before it was New York, but then everything moved towards California. Okay. And they would just tell me, I hear the stories about, in order for me to make it, I got to wait because it only be like one black guy at a time, or wow. one <laughs> black woman at a time, or, you know, I'm a, I'm a man from Asia, or Asian descent, and... I can't do this film because they don't need a person to do karate. Like, I don't even know karate, but they yeah. tell me I know. It's, I've heard all the stories. Right. You know, you hear all the things about, you know, how Hollywood doesn't want to take care of us or be there for us or whatever like that. So I said, you know what? i always been a person of saying, sometimes you got to stop complaining and just do for self. Okay. And I wrote the story, and it's a very, very interesting story. That and how did you get to the story? Like, did he tell you his life, life and times, or did you? I had, I was having conversations. Correct. Yeah. Conversations and just really analyzing his life as from a child. Going yeah. because now we know Mr. Marcus, or some people that don't know, Mr. Marcus, the adult film star from Adult Films, and if people watch Adult Films, and for people out there, they feel like they might say, "Oh my God, he's about Adult Films." That's how crazy. The porn business is, other than oil, it's probably the biggest business in the world. That's just what it is. It, people watch porn. It's just what it is. Whether you're looking at it on like TV or you know, your phone or laptop, it's there. Right. And and it's, it's, it's a billion dollar business, I'm sure. It's, it really is a billion dollar business. I took time and... I, I wrote it from, not just from a point of where you're watching a adult film, but their lives. You know, like, how, what made you get into this? Yeah. What made you stay into this? Do you have a family? Yeah. A lot of people are actually married. People have no idea that they're married with children and doing this. And how did it affect them? Correct. How, yeah. And, you know, it's almost like being ethnocentric sometimes. Like... Where people will say, you know, how people around the world could 
live like that where women have to come in their face. But that's ethnocentric because you're not, unless you go over there, maybe you might understand the way how they live Absolutely. and their lifestyle. And yeah. I was like, okay. And being around people that I know in the adult film industry, I would be around them and I would see, wow, you know, is that something I would get into? No. But I can't knock your lifestyle because I see how it's a different world. It's just a different world. And it's, to give a, maybe the closest analogy I can find is how modeling is, how the modeling world and the fashion world is. It's just, it's just a different world. It's a world within a world. And that's how adult, adult film industry is. And I actually hear about a lot of pitfalls. Right. You know, you would hear, first you would see the, the videos, and that's great, but I hear a lot of the pitfalls, and I saw myself like, wow, I didn't know this stuff really happened. And I had women that I know that were in the adult, adult film industry. They would tell me some extreme, crazy stories just about, okay, you know, things, there's some very freaky people out there, some very, very freaky people out there, and, uh, yeah, it, it's, it gets kind of crazy. Like, we don't realize that there's actually racism in mm. yeah, porn. <laughs> you're allowed, you're like, porn? Yeah. Like, it's, ra- it's porn. I can be racist. I even been there. Like, you know, I, I've been there and I've seen some things. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. And, you know, people like Mr. Marcus and other people I know, they would tell me, you know, they like what you could do. But they don't like you. Absolutely, as in when any industry, yeah. not necessarily like you. Now, uh, you are also in the movie. Not doing porn though. <laughs> but you had a very. My parents would still beat me. I, I, I know, but you had a very interesting scene. Yes, yes. And and we, you let, let's let's go to the clip right now. Okay. And take a look at that, and we'll come back in the. Let's set something up. All right. Me too. Yeah. Why not, kid? Okay, I'm about that life. Right. You have your paper? Oh. What do you mean papers? You're not papers. What do you mean? All right, well, let me know when you're ready. All right, I'm going to call you. All right? Bye. I'm ready. Yeah. Baby. Hey, open the cover. Testing. We do testing here, man. I'm about that life. That's cool. We do testing here. You know, you should go for a cop all right? Oh, really? It's crazy. I can go watch. You were very funny in that clip. Uh, how did you come up with the on the spot did you write that or was that ever rehearsed i wrote the whole film right i wrote the entire film i co-directed it with my with my guy he's great he's a, he has a great eye for shooting his name is uh willie carp okay. aka candy man black on track films and shout out to him and uh, everything in that film is true right so the hairy balls you wrote that before you yeah, because you know, you know, sometimes you'll be this is interesting at this perks, but it's still interesting when you hang with like a dog film is like he's he's no people. He's in my family photos. And you know, when you win them at girls think, okay, you're a porn star too. And I'm like, I'm just Kev Lawrence. You know, yeah, like how do you come up with the the AKA just something funny? It's a, the guy very, the name. it's a very humorous cr- clip. And when you, if you see it, when you see it, you're gonna die laughing. It's crazy. Yeah, I needed a name. Right. You know, every, every person in porn has a name. They don't say the government <laughs> name. You know, you get Steel or you know. In Lexington Steel and this, uh, I need a name. Mr. Marcus. I mean Harry Balls. <laughs> that was the name. Harry Balls. <laughs> that, was name. that was crazy. It's true. Also, Balls. Um. Also, <laughs> also, um, you have there's a, there's a scene where um, they ask him his name in the elevator. I I thought that was a powerful moment, and like he he didn't feel comfortable enough, and he gave him a fake name. Correct, because that is not his name. Right, Marcus, Mister Marcus, is not his name. Uh, his government name is what it is, and he had to find a name to give them. Right. And it was also dealing with an ID that he saw, somebody's ID he saw, but he had to give them a name when he met the woman, Miss Heather. And he gave her the name, and that's the name he ran with. And he had to live off that name. And to the point where even when he was trying to meet people as a regular guy, 
He had to say that. He had to say Marcus because they, he became so popular. Like everybody was cool with him. All cultures were racist. So it's like he was one of the very few black men that were able to be like featured in the AVN Awards and stuff like that, be amongst the uh, so called high class porn. Still porn, but you know, this is weird. That's why it's 100 proof, keeping it 100. Real, raw, and relevant is what we're doing right here. It's 100 proof. Listen up. Yeah, they do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, though. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but with this film, I, I, I really had to touch on, like I said, the racism, rape, uh, uh, suicide. And if you look, if you really look at not just the news, but just look it up wherever, you realize there's a lot of uh, people that don't feel that you committed suicide. You have no idea, like, why I'm suicide. It's, there's probably at least a girl a month, two girls a month committing suicide. But see, when you're watching adult films, you're not really thinking about that. You're just thinking about the money. not thinking about that, you're just thinking about the characters. Right. And you gotta say, why is person committing suicide? Yeah. You know, and I, I touched on that. And you know, many women, men too, they go to Hollywood to become an actor or an actress, whatever you want to call it. But in California, there is not there's there is no jobs in there. Except for being a waiter or waitress. And you're probably gonna make about three dollars an hour. And it's not like New York City where we just hop on a train and get everywhere. Right. No, you need to drive a car. Out there in California. <laughs> and if you plan on taking a bus, you gotta watch yourself because going to different neighborhoods, you gotta watch what you're wearing. That is, it is real out there with that. You know, they ask you where you're from. It's a neighborhood thing. So, you know, is that you're you're stuck for money. It's like what am I going to do? And I know many, many women that had to say, Hey, listen, two thousand dollars, I'll just do this real quick. And you go right. into the studio and you don't realize, you know, you're drinking, you might be doing some, uh, you know, cleaning your nostrils, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just drugs is, is a part of it. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're having sex inside somebody's office, but they're taping it, they're filming it. So you tell them, like, I don't want to be a part of this. Like, well, you know, I own this film. So now, when I want to, I'll put it out and shame you and your family. Like, okay, okay, wait, wait, I'll get involved, I'll get involved. Let you know, you know, you're doing more films, you're getting gang banged, everything, the money's good. Wow. A lot wow. of a lot of liquor, a lot of drugs. And then it seemed like it was twenty years, but for this it was only two years. So you say the, girl the, the life the lifespan. Dead. The lifespan of a of, that's what we're getting to. The lifespan of a porn artist. It's more short for the it's, it's, it's more short for the women. Right. Because for a guy, there's not that much guys as for women in traditional porn. Crazy I'm saying that. Uh, because you gotta be a stud. It's like how they used to use a slave. Oh, okay. You use a stud to do all the girls. Listen, people, I'm learning, you know, every day. You know what I mean? I'm keeping that at arm's length. <laughs> right. I'm learning this stuff every day, so can't continue. So that's for this, all you learn from Mr. Marcus. Yeah, yeah, and just me to my own research and stuff. Yeah. And for a stud, you just gotta be a stud. You don't really even have to be in shape like that. You know, but for a woman, you have to look top notch in shape, traditional porn. And but the thing about it is girls are turning eighteen every day. Absolutely. So girls are getting right. their body enhanced even before the 18. Isn't that girl Kylie Jenner? Yeah. Get like yeah. lip implants or, or lip shots at like 16. Like it, it's, so the body mod modifications is heavy, so you're never really the star. Before, maybe, maybe decades ago when you had people like Vanessa Del Rio, Janet Jack, I mean, they were like you're going big. To, you're going to OGs of the game right now. Yeah, they were like big in their own time. And you know, People wasn't really modif modifying their bodies as much like that. Right. Like you just had to, you you was a star. There are no stars now. 
Everybody's just don't know about that. And there, and once you get, you know, after doing a lot of drugs and alcohol, it wears in your body. All right, let's let's get back to the film. How did it? What was your first scene you shot, and how did it happen? It was a, it happened organically. You said like, all right, cool. First, I have to cast, or how, how did you first start it out? Like, all right, I want to do a film. I'm Kev Lawrence. I gotta get cameras. I gotta get the, the actors. How do how did you that go? How you right. about that process? I looked around and I found I got connected from my guy Esquire. Him and his brother Mike Marvelous from Long Island. They 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 had, they had a video for a song of theirs, and they, I like like had a video from the director. Right. And the videographer name was Willie Carpenter, uh, AJ Candy Man. From Life on Track Films, and I asked him to be part of the film. We had a meeting. He agreed. He liked the concept you came up with. Yeah. Okay. Did he read the script? Or did yeah. Okay. We put together how we were going to shoot it, and I had to go find the actor. Yeah. Or, and the actor I found, it was Vin Keaton, an R&B singer, mm. slash church man. Hey. And it was like, it was a real, it was a stretch for him. Yeah, but he's I, an actor. I, I gotta, I gotta give it to him because he he went through a lot. Okay, he went through a lot with his faith and church people because oh. I said, this is acting. Yeah, you know, like he wasn't doing nothing no different. If you watch the TV show Power, like it, yeah, but you know, I think people feel that way because it's independent film, so right. they don't give it enough respect. Okay. As if it was like a major it. TV that, well, oh yeah, let's do it. But when you hear, I was independent film from a guy like, like you. Not saying he felt that way, but right. I thought others did. Yeah. They kind of look at it like, oh, no, it's some rinky dinks. I'm like, no, it's, I'm shooting a real film. I, you know, it's independent, so everything might not look crazy like, you know, Hollywood cameras, or, but it's the message behind it. Man, let, let me tell you something. Regardless of what, my biggest thing is that you accomplished something. You made a film, a feature film. It's not a 30 minute film, it's not an hour long film, it's two hours. It's like a real film, it's not a game. You went out there and you did it on your own budget. That's something to be applauded. You know I see a lot of people do short films, short films, and it's like, all right, short films is cool, but I actually want to see a feature film. Even if it's like, like I said, not with the, the biggest budget, the biggest camera budget or whatever, I want to see a feature film. and. And I have a lot of people that I know that are aspiring actors or actresses for all cultures or races. I'm like, you know, we're going to get you involved. Right. Do you remember the first scene you shot? Because did you do it chronologically? Like from the beginning of the movie? Like, let me go to Cali where he was born and use the kid? Or did you do it as an adult? What did you, what was the first scene you shot? And you were like, you know what? This looks good. I'm going to keep going. Well, the first scene I shot was a when he was in the studio. And we was talking in the studio with John, a guy, a guy named John O that played Julius and Jock. Okay. Another more, sorry. Yeah. And we did a scene with him in the studio talking. That was in California. And I just remember when we got off the plane, because I didn't waste no time. I wasted no time. When we got off the plane, I just went straight to work. And I just remember saying to myself, like, there's nobody I could turn and look back at me like, you know, you gotta make sure this works. It was all on me. Right. And uh, it was nonstop. It was nonstop work. And you realize when you see people that have like 10 assistants and all this type of shit, I, I am the assistants. I, I am the casting man. Those, those, yeah. I am the, I'm searching for a location. <laughs> Excuse me, location. Yeah. I'm even one of the actors. I felt like, like Spike Lee. Like, I understand that. Because I, I remember she you have to do a guerrilla filming. <laughs> Wherever you got to film, you're there. You got the people there. And let's go. And you have to watch out for some cities that you're taping in because if you don't have a permit, they will take all your equipment and arrest you. So wow. a lot of things, you know, you got to move a certain way. And it was a great experience. It was a, I, I, I felt a sense of extreme humbleness. At times, I don't even know how I finished it. I've, there's times I felt like I should go in a corner and hide and just ball up in the dark. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it flashes in your yeah. head. Like, you could do that. You could take that easier way out. Right. 
But I said, you know what? I'm, I told people I'm going to do this, and people actually believed in me enough to be a part of it. So there was no way I could turn my back on it. And shout out to everybody I was a part of it. Ron, Mary, just everybody. And you realize, and I made sure I paid people, I fed people, and it's like, I made sure, I, I treated it as if I was a company. Instead of uh, saying, like, you know, I'm just do. a homie, like, yo, I'll see you later on. No, right, I right. treat it like you're dealing with a company. Absolutely, yeah, because everybody needs to be paid for their talent, no matter what it is. Right, right. And it was, it was just remarkable. We went and shot in New York, shot in California, shot back to California, York again. So I was just shooting, I was flying back over, flying people over, back and forth. Like you said, you was in California, though. Like you said, it's very different over there. Did you encounter anything crazy while you was there filming? Uh, there was some, there was some, some things. Any gang activity? <laughs> shout out to, uh, <laughs> shout out to the organizations out there. The organizations. Yeah, I, I come organizations. Okay. You know, people can say gangs. I say organizations. <laughs> when they found out what I was doing, yeah, they was extremely supportive. Okay. And shout, shout out to my Mexicans, my El Salvadorians. They held me down out there. They held me down. Dudes came up to me and told me, like, started crying. So I was on the phone with my mom. My mom saw me in one of the clips of me in a in a a gown, a graduation gown. I never graduated before. So I guess she started getting emotional that, yo, you finally graduated. Wow, right. So like, yo, bro, yo, you good over here, bro. You good over here. I'm like, all right, cool. And <laughs> shout out to LAP Studios. They they helped me down out there. Crazy. Airlo, OG Milo, and the whole crew, man. It's, it, a lot of people just, you know, a lot of people would say one thing mm -hmm. and do the opposite and use people. I just took to the, to the script. If I say I'm going to do something, do it and show appreciation. And from there, I be, I, I've got great friends now because of that. Like, if I touch down, they want to know where I'm at. That stuff. And it was just great, man. It was, it was great. And some times where, you know, we had to hurry up and leave because some of the sex scenes mm. were um, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that, I gotta get into my mode, that, that professional was, mode, say, no, we're not gonna do all that. That that was my next question. Was it challenging filming the sex scenes? Because this is a porn star. It's still a porn star. Yes. Yeah, so there has to be sex scenes, right? So was it a challenge to do those scenes, especially you know with actresses and actors that might not have the big Hollywood budget, was, and to convince them to, to make a, uh, it's a, very a sex scene? It was a it was an interesting challenge. It was not a challenge because of worrying about other people. It was a challenge to myself as a professional to make sure that everybody feels safe, secure, and I, it wouldn't be a you just got me here just for sex. Like I, I, I really had to wear a professional hat, like, and I, and I kept it like that so much. And people think me like, you know, if you want, I can have them go. All, nah, no, no, we won't do that. And these are some, some, some people, especially some girls that are like, you know, really big on, you know, followers. So people that want to do them, like that. But it just the respect factor to the point where, after we was done filming. We were still hanging out. Like, we just became, we had a tight bond. Like, we did this together. As you should. It was it was great. Shout out to all the, the ladies that were part of it. Shout out to the guys, especially Ben Keaton. That's, it was very challenging because, you know, you're a church man. And, you he know, had a good vibe. I felt his energy. But that's the, the he is, he fit the part of exactly what I wanted. Right. And he did a phenomenal job. And... Shout out to the establishments that even have me at their places to shoot and film. Now, I remember there's another scene in there where um, he's at the Hollywood Hills. And he's running up that hill. You want to go to that scene and come back? Yeah, let's, let's go to that scene real quick. That Hollywood Hills. You gotta get up. You gotta get up. Dust yourself off. Look towards your faith and your higher power. And know that you're destined to make it. He was, he seemed like he was 
talking to himself in that scene. He yes. talking himself up. And what was going through his mind? And then what was that situation that put him in that mindset in that in the movie? What, what was he trying to convey? Well, I wanted, that that to convey, I wanted that to convey struggle. That's why I have to right up the hill. Right. You know, because we all have uphill battles. Ah. So everything that people say as for metaphors, I made sure I used it in the film. And, well, some things like that. And that's the metaphor of right up the hill and seeing Hollywood. And people that are actors and actors are always trying to make it to Hollywood. It's like it's within reach, but it's still far away. Correct. Okay, and you got to keep going. and But to try your best one more time to keep your integrity. There goes that word again. <laughs> integrity. Especially with the situation that happened with him in the film. Right. Where his integrity was tested. You know, and to get back to, like I said, people don't know about the racism and everything, but also... When you're dealing with a company that's a, a billion dollar billion dollar in, industry and companies are making so much money off of you, people tend to say, you know what, I want to go independent. Right. But they, they're scared. They don't know how to do it. I was there with it when he actually got his own studio. And it was just a shell. He said, you know, I'm going to go independent. And I was like, that's great, man. I was like, you know, you might, and not me, but other people say, you know, how will the majors receive you for going independent because then you start making your own movies and owning your own masters. It's just like the music business. Right. Owning your masters. And he tried that and he was doing it and then all of a sudden it was a scandal. And they told people do not mess with him because we'll blackball you too. So they blackballed him. But then years later you see people like Pinky, uh, Brian Pumper, and others start doing their own movies. And so they're always owning their stuff. I think that's a natural progression. Right. Uh, I think we should leave it right there. And you got to give them the link to the film. So that way they know where to find it. Um, I don't know. We could put the YouTube link right yes. here. And then you can go check it out. And definitely need your feedback. All my 100 proofers. Go check it out. Feature length film by my man, Kev Lawrence Marcus. You can see the trailer on his IG page, Kev underscore Lawrence. Continue to watch 100 Proof on the Tosius Network. It's the real Charlemagne, Kev Lawrence. We'll be back. Ciao, everybody.